Last time I introduced you to what a two-dimensional array is, now let's do some basic things with them. So right here on the screen is the generic pattern for creating a new two-dimensional array. Um, so here are several examples that follow that pattern. So you start with a data type and then bracket bracket. And the data type tells you what type of variables are you organizing into a grid. So this would be integers in a grid, this would be strings in a grid, this would be doubles in a grid. Then you have the variable name. So here my inter, int array is called Bob and my string array is called letter grid and my double array is called temperature data. And then you have an equal sign where you say new and then you repeat the same data type, but then you tell it the size of the array you wanna create inside brackets. So if I wanna make an array that's a height of three and a width of five, I would say new int three, five. This creates a 10 by 10 grid of strings. This creates a 1000 by 1000 grid of doubles. So that's the pattern. When a grid first gets created, it's full of a default value. So for uh, an int grid, it's full of zeros. For a string grid, it's full of a value called null, which, which is sort of like no string. Um, so if you actually want to put values into your array, just like with an array list where every single variable has a location number, every single variable inside a grid has two location numbers. It's a row and a column number. Um, and we use the same word, you use index instead of, col instead of location number. So this blue value here is at row one, column two. And just like array lists, all of the location numbers, all of the indexes, start at zero. So the columns go from zero to four, rows go from zero to two. So here's an example of how I would save the number three inside this location. I would say my grid, that's like the name of the variable, and then you use brackets to say what the row and the column are. So my grid, row one, column two, I wanna save a value three into there. Okay, so now you try. What would I have to type in here to save 65 into that particular location? Go ahead, pause the video. So the answer is, you can see here 65 is at row two, column three. So you'd say my grid two, three equals 65. Okay, one more. What about 21 into that location? And there you go, that location is row zero, column zero, so my grid zero zero equals 21. You can use that same pattern not only to put values into variables, but also to get values from variables in your grid. So if you look at this, my grid zero zero is still referring to that same location, only now I'm not saving a value into it, I'm getting the value out of it. So think for a second, what do you think this should display? So my grid zero, zero refers to row zero, column zero. So this entire expression gets replaced by the value that's saved in the grid there. And then my grid zero, one refers to row zero, column one. And so six is the value there. So this gets replaced by six. And so when you add them together, you get that the answer is 27. Okay, you try it now. What about this one? What do you think that's gonna display? So row two, column zero is 92. Row one, column two is three. You add them together and you get 95. All right, so in array lists, you saw how you can use a variable inside a for loop to loop over lots of location numbers to, to visit all the things in the list. So think about what this one would do. Here, I've got a variable called row that starts at zero, goes up by one every time, and keeps going as long as it's smaller than three. And then I'm going to print what's in my array at whatever location number is in this variable and one. So tell me, what do you think it's gonna display? All right, so row starts out at zero. So when row starts out at zero, it's like accessing the array at row zero, column one, which would be the number six. So the first thing we display is six. And then row goes up by one because it's in this for loop. And so now it's like we've gone down by one row, but the column number is still one. So we're still in this column. So we started at six, now we're down at 56 because we're at a row one, column one. So we display 56. 
And then now that we've looped back again, now row is two. And so the value at, oops, I've, oops, that's not correct. Hold on. <laughs> All right, when we were making the slides, we forgot that it was a uh, column one because this number one has never changed. All right, so, uh, so row two, column one displays the number 35. So altogether, we've displayed the values 6, 56, 35. And you'll notice that those are the values going down in column that's at location 1, which sort of makes sense. I'm saying let's visit all the rows from 0 to 2. Here are the row numbers, 0 to 2. And those are changing, but the column, number 1, is always the same. So I'm going down, 6, 56, 35. OK, you give it a try. Let's say column is a variable that goes from 1 it keeps going up by one and it keeps adding as long as it's less than four. And I'm going to be displaying array zero call. Decide what you think that's gonna display. It's gonna display six, 942, 62. So column starts at one and goes up one, two, three, but it doesn't make it to four because you can see here it says column has to be less than four. And then the first number here is the row index. So because it's zero and never changes, I'm always in row zero right here. So the row doesn't change, instead the column changes. So I'm at row zero, column one, then row zero, column two, then row zero, column three. So that's why it's six, nine, forty two, sixty two. So in order to think about two-dimensional arrays, you have to keep straight in your head. What does the first number mean and what does the second number mean? You have to keep straight. It's a row and a column. And then if you're looping, you have to think about what's staying the same and what's changing. So usually you want to loop over everything in the entire grid. Or maybe not usually, but that's a very common pattern. So. This code is, is like saying loop over all the columns in row zero, because here uh, we've got a zero as the row number, and call is going from zero up to four. So I'm looping through all the columns in that first row. And then if after that, if I wanted to loop through all of the columns in the next row, I could say have the same pattern. Column is going from zero to four, only now I have a one in the row location. And then if I wanted to loop through the bottom row, same pattern, column could go from 0 to, five, to 4, but I'd have a 2 in the row location. So if I had th these three loops, one after the next, then it would display the entire grid. Um, the problem is we don't want to have to have a separate loop for each row we want to display. And also right now we're using print line, which means that each value, like we're looking at them horizontally. We're looking at 21, 6, 9, 42. But if we actually printed them, each value would print on a new line in the console. Because once you do a print line, it moves down and then displays the next one. So here's the most common pattern for looping over the entire grid. You have a loop inside another loop. That's called a nested loop. So here I'm saying I want each row, for each row starting at 0 going up to 2, I want to do the thing that's in the box. So for e But then like what's in the box? You'll notice that in the box we have this pattern for looping over every column. So if you put them together, we're saying for each row, I want to loop through all the columns in that row. And that displays your entire 2D grid. So just for example, um, this upper for loop, row would start at 0, which would mean that the variable row here would be 0. So now we're only looking in this top row. And this this inner for loop where column is going up, this is going to loop column all the way from 0 to 4 without ever going back up to this top for loop. So the whole time column is changing, row is always 0. So column starts at 0 and then goes to 1 and then 2 and then 3, 3 and then 4. Wow, a lot of errors in these slides. Okay, 3, 4. And now that we're at the end of the column loop, this for loop is done. So we hit the closing brace for this row loop, 
and row adds by one. So before we were at row zero, now row increases, so now we're at row one, and the first location here, which is our row location, has gone up to one. And now we go through the same inner loop where column is gonna go from zero to four, only this time we're in a different row number. So we'd loop across this way. And then we're done with this loop, and so the outer loop increases by one, so now row is two. And now you can see with a row of two, we're gonna go through all the same columns again. So that's the overall pattern. Two loops, one inside the next, we're saying rows should go from, two, from zero up to two, and then for each of the rows, column is gonna go from zero up to four, and then we're going to print what's in that row and column. And so that traverses starting from the upper left-hand corner going right and then down a row and then right and then down a row and then right. This is a pattern you're gonna see a lot. Okay, but the problem is when we, what I said before, when we print this, we're using a print line statement. So you can see here the output has the numbers in the grid, only it doesn't look like a grid. I'm still doing 21, 6, 942, 62, 582. That's these ones. But then when I move to the next row, all the numbers are just displaying, you know, vertically downwards. So a more conventional pattern would be this. Inside here, instead of saying print line, we'll just say print. So that way each number we print, uh, we won't have the output go to the new line. And then I think we'll display a tab after each one so that you have a big space between each number we print. But then at the end of this loop, that means we're at the end of the row. So we want our output to go down by one row. And that's why we have a print line statement here. Because at the end of the row, if we do a print line with nothing inside, that will just move the cursor to the next line. And so then when we go back up to do another row, now when we loop through all the columns, we'll be displaying on this next line. So this is the conventional pattern that you'd use for looping over a 2D array. Come back in the next video and let's try some.